welcome to Web Mind Meadows, your YouTube channel for all things RC and sometimes quilting. And today we're going to be talking about the sometime quilting. Um, my wife belongs to an organization called Victoria Quilts, uh, and they're uh, an organization that um, make quilts for uh, cancer patients that are distributed to cancer patients across Canada. They do a lot of quilting. Uh, I don't know the numbers, hundreds, thousands. Uh, in a year, uh, but uh, there's a, a lot of work involved and my wife does a lot of the uh, piecing and quilting and of course binding. And uh, binding can, joining the ends of the binding can sometimes be a challenge uh, to make a nice clean cut and uh, my wife asked me to uh, to work with her on, on a process to make this um, uh, foolproof. And hopefully uh, this video today will, uh, will show you one method of joining uh, the uh, binding ends of, of a quilt so that you uh, always end up with a, a nice clean finish. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about, my wife made these uh, templates here um, uh, so that uh, we can use them in this uh, video. Uh, this here part here with the little quilting there is would represent the quilt and these two fabrics here represent the binding of course you wouldn't have two different colored binding uh, on your quilts but uh, this is used to uh, highlight uh, what we need to do when we actually start uh, doing the joining process uh, so with that in mind uh, we're going to probably go into some close-up pictures so you can see what we do uh, but before we get started, a couple of points I want to I want to mention. Uh, it's easier to see at this uh, larger view. Try to leave yourself at least a 12-inch space that is on so on between the two ends of the binding. Um, you'll find that as we move through this process, we'll, we're going to need to manipulate uh, the quilt a bit, and this amount of space uh, will allow you to kind of work a little bit easier, especially when you go to the sewing machine and start sewing. So uh, try to leave yourself a good uh, 12 inches and it doesn't matter how big these tails overlap, uh, they, knew they need to overlap uh, at least uh, the width of your binding, uh, the width of your binding unfolded, um, but um, I wouldn't be too concerned as long as they're uh, overlapping about that amount, uh, that would be great. So uh, let's get started by looking at some uh, what we're going to do in close-up. Now let's get started uh, looking at this in more detail. Uh, you've noticed here, as mentioned before, um, uh, this is two different colored fabrics, so this will make it uh, a little bit easier uh, so that when you uh, see the work that's being done, uh, it'll, it should be clearer to you. So the first thing we need to do uh, in this process is to cut the ends of our of our uh, binding uh, so that we can uh, start the joining process. What we do is we find our midpoint for the binding and uh, I've left a 12 inch opening so I'm going to count over six inches. One, two. So the center point is this dark line here and I'm going to lay out my uh, right side of my fabric, my right side of my binding and I'm going to count over uh, the width of my binding from the center. Now when I say the width of the binding, I'm always referring to the width of the binding when it's unfolded, not the folded width. So the width of this binding is three inches, and so I found my midpoint. I'm going to go over three inches, one, two, three, and I'm going to cut. Now, at this point, uh, we don't need to be exactly right on because we're going to remeasure uh, to make sure we have the right dimensions. Now, since my binding is three inches, I am going to be going back from the left three inches and put in a pin as a marker. So here we go, one, two, three, and I'm going to take a pin here, use one with a little bit of yellow on it so we can see it better, three inches, and then put that there so this is my marker. The next step we need to do is fold out the left 
side of the binding. And where we put that pin, that's the marker now for where we cut the left side of the binding. That should now give us, uh, in this case, a 3 inch overlap because we have a 3 inch binding. So you want this overlap to be the width, to represent the width of your binding. Now we're ready to start the next step. Uh, the next step uh, is uh, in this process is to simply fold the right binding up on a 90 degree angle. This is the, the 90 degrees I'm talking about. Uh, it doesn't have to, you don't need a, a measure, just use your sight of eye. You just don't want it to be too far out of line. Basically, you want a nice 90 degree bend in that fabric there. And then what you do next is you take the left binding and place that on top, ensuring that these fabrics line up, right? So that we see that the fabric here lines up where the left and uh, the left and the right binding align. Now what we want to do uh, is we want to take the corner of the left binding, not both corners, just the top corner of the left binding and the top corner of the right binding and bring them together ensuring that the fabric stays in line all the way down the side there and pin it okay and we're just going to take this marker pin out because it gets in the way and now what we want to do is we want to pin all the way around where these fabrics overlap. Now you can see why we need the 12 inch uh, space for working because now we need to scrunch this fabric up in order to do uh, this joining process. So we're just going to simply add these pins to bring it together as, uh, as good as we can around the corners. And I'm just going to put in four pins to do this job. So now we have our fabric uh, pinned together. Now the next step is we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're simply going to sew from this corner over to this corner to form our triangle. These are the two corners we originally put together. We're now going to sew from this corner to this corner on the sewing machine and uh, we'll go over there now. Um, so I thought in order to make this easier to see for the video I'm simply, and I don't think you need to do this, but I, I'm going to draw a line from the corner to the corner just so that it's easier to see. Okay. And to go back again we're going to sew from the corner using the triangle we're going to be sewing from this corner over to this corner. And like I said, I've just drawn that line on there to make it a little bit easier to see. Uh, and uh, just using a straight stitch, I'm using a machine that, uh, an, old, an older machine that my wife had um, uh, before she upgraded. Uh, so uh, I use this for uh, some of the sewing projects I help on, um, following her tips. So I simply just, uh, do a, a straight stitch all the way down here. And I'm just going to sew right off the end. And then clip that off. And now we're going to go over to the table and take a look at uh, what the results are. Okay, now that we've sewn uh, our, uh, our two ends together, remembering this is the two corners we put together, uh, now I'm just simply going to cut this triangle off, leaving the leaving a quarter inch on there, and obviously good scissors out. And I'm going to press this out. I don't normally press it out, but uh, my wife always 
chastises me when I don't, so I figure for a video I have to be good. And we'll just press that out. And fold this back in the right way. down and there you go uh, now all you do is uh, stitch along the rest of your binding and you see you got a really nice smooth finish uh, to finish off your uh, binding of your quilt um, I hope you've enjoyed this video I hope you find it helpful and if you like uh, the video subscribe to it or send along comments Thank you very much and uh, we hope to talk to you soon.